Greetings, and welcome to another video. And as usual in this series, I'm going to give this, give you how I would go about surviving in a popular zombie movie. Well, not exactly popular given the last one I covered, but today I'm going to be talking about one of the biggest zombie movies in the world right now, Train to Busan, a Korean zombie movie which was which is quite popular. Not entirely sure why it's so popular, yet it's honestly a good movie. Just, I mean, I didn't care much for the ending, but I would recommend it. Now, this one, it's an interesting one. You have plenty of the, you have plenty of that you know, subject to talk about for the zombies, and despite it being, yeah, you know, negating most of my gear possibilities, I will say. Yeah, that I have a pretty interesting way of beating this movie. Now, before I get into this movie, of course, I would like to give a spoiler warning. But I would also like to say, today, I have a sponsor. Now, I'm the video is being sponsored by my business, The Backyard Armory. Our motto is, fighting for a better apocalypse tomorrow. We carry everything. Right now, we're only carrying weapons and armor. But we're working on expanding to ev yeah, various survival stuff. Currently, I'm working on you make. I'm cur working on making very on a survival fishing kit. Yeah, which is compact and will fit into any kit or even your pocket for that matter. Every and it has everything you need for it. Yeah, yeah, for your for a fishing kit, for and for your survival kit. Or it can even be just an add-on to your normal tackle box. It's and of course we're working in waterproof containers and you know various other things. Yeah, and for a limited time, yeah, if you yeah when you go to place your order, yeah let the person you're yeah buying yet yeah, or you order by messaging yeah they paid through me through the page, but. Yet, for a limited time, if you use the code RANDOMAN, you will get 10% off of your first order. As long as it's an acceptable thing for the 10%. You'll understand later. And, well, that's about it. So make sure to check that out, link in the description. But let's get into Train to Busan. Starting with the zombies. Now, Train to Busan zombies are an interesting one. They're strong, fast, resilient, the virus travels yeah fast despite only being through bites. And when I say fast, I'm not talking about World War Z fast, where it ha always happens in about ten seconds. But I'm talking about fast, similar to uh, twenty-eight weeks later. It can be anywhere from a couple seconds to maybe even a few minutes. It honestly is inconsistent, and the first girl, honestly, I have no idea why it took her so long to turn. And I don't even know how long it took her to turn. They never showed her get bit. And don't say in the comments about how she tied off her leg. Believe me, that's not going to work at any situation. Now, with that in mind, the zombies do have two main weaknesses. First off, they can be killed without headshots. In the movie, we saw one guy constantly, repeatedly snap zombies' necks and kill them. Also, I think in one scene, he threw a zombie onto the ceiling. But I might be mistaking it was the, some movie from ho some Hong Kong movie. I honestly can't remember. But, I will say this. It is pretty hard to break necks if you're not that strong. It takes at least 3,000 newtons of force to break a person's neck. And since you, and the neck is pretty close to the mouth, so you might have to deal with that. And their zombie's biggest weakness is they only really use two senses. Their sight and their hearing. They're, as long as they can see you, they will be hostile. But, as, but if they can't see you, then it, they go completely docile. And... They hear things, can alert their attention, 
but they aren't hostile until they see you. Oh, and? That's it. Really, that's all there is to these zombies. They're strong, fast, resilient, all that stuff, but they can be killed without headshots. They're sensitive as they rely on their on seeing you. Honestly, not entirely sure how these zombies yeah, took over the Kore South Korean government. Well, not really the government, but South Korea as a whole. Now, that's really about it for the zombies. So let's move on to my, what gear I'm going to have. Now, for the last few movies, I've talked about all sorts of it. Yeah, all sorts of gear I could use for it. Zombie Land, I went over my I mean, most of, a good portion of my weapons collection, talking about what I would carry with me. Yeah, Brain Dead, I talked about. I used mentioned talked about all my gear for containing and disposing of zombies. But as with my last movie, Cooties, this is a, this takes place in an area where I can't carry a lot of stuff with me. Cooties was in a school. Train to Busan, well, it takes place on a train in South Korea, and I'm not entirely sure about the laws in South Korea, but I will say this, there are some things that I do know I will have with me. First off, my sneakers. I, I, I can't really, I'm not really allowed to wear my work boots anymore, so sneakers are all I yeah, really wear. Or, and my bomber jacket. This thing is bite proof. I'm not gonna bite it to show you. I did that in my last three, last last three videos on, on the subject. But yeah, that's not all. I also got my work gloves. I use I carry these with me everywhere. Keep the leather side on the outside. These things have, are the very reason I have ten fingers still. If I can, if I can uh, hit my hand while chopping firewood with these on and still have 10 fingers, believe me, no zombie is biting through these. And of course, duct tape. Not only does it have, it have thousands of uses, but, I, but they showed it in the, yeah, in the movie on the train, so even if I don't bring it with me for some reason, there's plenty of it on the train. Of course I would, of course this is reflective duct tape, uh, I didn't I uh, don't usually get it, but I asked my mom to pick me up some duct tape while she was at the store. This is what I got. Not gonna complain. It's duct tape. I usually wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend getting a yeah getting reflective duct tape, but there is set, but it's honestly better than the pink duct tape they had in the movie. And I severely doubt the South Korean government banned rope. Yeah, just or regardless if it's drawn a train or not. So. Maybe I bring a bundle of paracord with me. Very useful, and something I would carry with me. And these are a maybe, because I'm not entirely sure if I'd be allowed to bring this on the train. But, pocket knife, and maybe a fixed blade knife, because I like to carry both kinds with me. But, as I said, I'm not entirely familiar with the South Korean laws, or their train protocols. So I'm not, so I don't know if I'm allowed to bring the stuff with me. But if I am, these are invaluable. Not, not only are they weapons, but I can use them to make weapons. Now, what would I use this stuff for? Well, let's look at it. I can put my, I can, you know, tuck my pant legs into my, into my shoes to keep, negate all loose, all open skin on my lower body. This as I stated, it is bite-proof, and it covers you know, my entire torso and arms. These, I don't think I need to explain why I need why I'd be wearing these gloves. Duct tape just cover up any exposed skin with a few layers, or I can make some more of my duct tape armor. Backyard armory, link in the description. And I already told you what I'd be using the knives for if I'm allowed to carry them. Now that's all I can really say I'd definitely be carrying with me. I might carry a flashlight, but I severely doubt that would give me much use. Except 
maybe blinding a zombie by shining the light in their eyes. And I honestly don't know if I'd have a flash, be bringing a flashlight with me. But I will say this: that's pretty close to the gear I'd have with me. Of course, I'm. There is also the fact of what I would normally be wearing, maybe jeans, all that stuff. But that's pretty much it. And as for my plan for dealing with the zombies, don't. I'm on a train filled with other people. They all have cell phones. There's intercoms to talk to the conductor. My plan? Stop the train. Leave the cars. Gather everyone from all the cars. Go into the cars that don't have zombies with them. And then? Go to the stations that go to wherever we're trying to get to. It's honestly the best way to handle the movie. The way they did it in the movie was going through each and every car, clearing them out, and then going to the next, trying to save people. At least that is how it was close to the end. But, regardless, this is a better option because it doesn't involve facing the zombies. The best way to, f the best way to win a fight is to not have to fight at all. And, since a good and since, and since most of these people don't have weapons, it's a good idea to cut fighting to a minimum because the zombies can fight, even without weapons. Honestly, this is a pretty beatable movie if you think carefully. But as for the how to go, I'd go about it you know, in the way the movie went. Well, at the first, at the start of it. Believe me, I am going to... Believe me, if I see a you know, random lady jump on the, a guy's back and bite part of his neck out, my first thought is going to be either, this girl's crazy, I'm going to the next car, or, yep, zombies, next car. So I'm getting out of there regardless. And I'm going to... And I'm closing that door and locking it. I don't care how many people... Yeah, there, even if there are a few people left in the car... They're probably dead anyway. We can't. I'm not gonna risk dying just to save a few random people. And of course, yet I think it would. You know, I would start my plan from yeah from there. But there are a few. But there is there are gonna be a few cars with zombies. All that stuff. Honestly, I think I, that this movie is pretty easy to beat. Of course, the, yeah, there is, of course, I would, I actually would come up with an idea like covering up every part of me or hiding under blankets to make sure that the zombies couldn't see me and then maybe going to, trying to go through the room. I would, but before I did this, I would test it using the glass doors. I'm not going to risk anything. And even if I did try doing this, you best bet I'm covering myself head to toe in duct tape. Honestly, this is probably the easiest movie I've covered in this series about how to get in my plan to survive. Zombie Land, well, it's my general zombie plan. Just zombie apocalypse. Yet, brain dead. Just contain the zombies until I'm ready to destroy them, and then burn them. Cooties. That one was pretty difficult, given that it takes place in a school with zombies everywhere. But since I can't be turned, and I'm a master of improvised weaponry, it wasn't that hard. This... It's probably easier, because I might not have to fight zombies at all. Even with the negation of most of my items, this was a pretty easy one to beat. Now, as usual, yeah, check, yeah, comment down below what what you want the next zombie movie I review, I talk about to be. And, you know, like this video if you want to see more of these. And, 
again, make sure to check out the Backyard Armory. We're trying to get into blacksmithing here soon, so every sale is yet yeah, one step yeah, closer to helping us make things like, you know, kunai, karambits, actual knives. I'm actually working on a really cool design for a trench knife or a cutlass. But, so, yeah, any, any patronage is very much appreciated. Thank you all for watching. This is Random Man, signing off.